and if you hear a distinctive squelching noise, it's the very unfestive sound of something being pulled out of someone's arse. Welcome back to Witch Fix, and we're finally here. It's finally happening. The last two books in the Kate Bryan private series. I cannot wait to be able to read literally anything else, to be honest, because it's true you really can have too much of a good thing. And I was really enjoying this series at the start. It's what made me decide after reading Private to get all the other books, because although there weren't witches in them, I'm still having a pretty good time uh, with all the drama and the glamour of it all. It, I kind of missed out on that whole like gossip girl pretty little liars thing that was popular um, around the time that I was in university. Uh, so this was kind of a nice like time to indulge in that sort of thing and it was quite interesting but now I feel like my attention has begun to wane and it's fitting that these are like the shortest books in the series because I feel like the interest in it was maybe tapering out by this point and it, it was just kind of left to, to die a death. But Let's uh, get into book 13, sort of, the numbering is weird, Ominous, which is the first book after the revelation that Reed and Noel are descended from witches, and after the prequel where we learn all about the origin of the Book of Spells. Now, I think I may have been a bit harsh in my Book of Spells review because some of the things that I thought of as plot holes are explained in Ominous, so although they weren't explained at the time I read the prequel, they are kind of retroactively explained later or at least noises are made in a way that kind of makes me think that that's all the explanation we're going to get. So we start the book off pretty much exactly where we left it, Reed and Noel discovering the, the book of spells. Both are quite unimpressed by the fact that they've been asked to, to, to rush back and discover this admittedly quite cool secret room with a book of spells in it. Noel is far and away the most derisive. She thinks that her grandmother is cracked and that this has all just been some sort of crazy old lady's uh, fantasy. Reed is less sure. She recognises the handwriting in the Book of Spells as belonging to Eliza Williams, so she knows that she wrote at least part of it uh, and begins to connect the dots between that and the Billings Literary Society. She finds out from a ghost of Eliza in a dream, I wish I was kidding, there's a lot of dream sequences in Ominous, um, that they buried the books for safety's sake, but that promises like this are made to be broken. And that's basically the only nod we get to the idea that the book was at some point recovered. The other books, we're told, have been lost for years, so it is now just the Book of Spells. We're not really told who, who dug it up and how it came to be on a podium in the secret room, which member of Billings in the past or randomer managed to find both the book and the secret room without any help uh, but we are told a little bit about why the Billings Literary Society book that Reed was given uh, didn't mention any of this basically it was meant to be written in a kind of code although there were like the initiation ceremonies etc for joining the literary society like a, a sorority those were actually the witch ceremonies they just didn't write anything about witchcraft in that and there is a section where pages have been torn out and that is where the warning that Eliza left behind was originally written and subsequently removed and the loose pages disappeared uh, into the book of spells to be kept there. Again unsure as to who did that because they would have had to have both the Billings Literary Society book and the book of spells. Why would Eliza write a warning only to immediately rip it out and put it into the book of spells instead? Unclear. But we get we get a little bit of explanation. So backing up a little bit on the plot they find the book and Reed reads one of the um, incantations, the one to like join the sisterhood, the initiation ceremony, and the candle she's holding goes out and then comes back to life, which is what happened in the Book of Spells initiation. Somehow she's able to perform this initiation without the 10 other girls that should be there. But uh, it's suggested that this is the awakening point for her powers, which is foresight, because she then starts to have disturbingly vivid dreams, just like Eliza Williams did, 
in Book of Spells, which sort of predict the future. So she has a dream of Eliza showing her where the locket is buried and then is able to recover it, which manages to semi-convince Josh and Ivy that something weird is going on. I will say that even though it's a bit weird to suddenly start including witches in a book series like this, it is at least gratifying that this entire book, they kind of don't really believe in it. Noelle especially doesn't read, because she's the one experiencing these weird dreams, is more predisposed to believe in the whole witch thing, but still edges into disbelief even right up until the book's exciting climax. So it at least handles it in a semi-realistic way. So she starts having these dreams and in one of them she sees Astrid being attacked by, I feel like it's Ariana or Cheyenne, one of the crazy bitches who had it out for readers in all of these dreams attacking one of the Billings girls and then after the dream that Billings girl is missing. So two girls immediately go missing from campus, Astrid and someone else whose name I can't be bothered to remember. But obviously this is not good and everyone reacts instantly by cancelling school and sending everybody home because they've had too many murders at this point. Too many murders on campus, off of campus, near campus, too many deaths. So everyone gets sent home and most of the main characters end up staying in New York for some reason. The backdrop for all of this is the fact that Reader's now found out she's Noelle's half-sister and she's meant to be kind of, I guess, getting to know her biological father, Mr. Lange, but uh, she isn't really. She's kind of avoiding him, but he's throwing her a massive birthday party in New York uh, as kind of a, like a, a way to welcome her to the family, I guess. And we get some more information about her background from Noelle's grandmother because it's been commented on that Reed looks like Eliza Williams and it turns out this is because her mother is a descendant of Eliza Williams's daughter who like married down and lost all her wealth and that's why Reed's family is poor and live in the middle of nowhere and Noelle's family is directly descended from Teresa Billings so she is descended from not one but two members of the original coven which is obviously you know reader's special source in every book because of various reasons usually it's just because she's catnip to men but now it's apparently because she's descended from two of the original witches something that i neglected to mention in my review for book of spells because i thought nothing of it at the time is that when uh catherine the possessed girl is being unpossessed and I guess kind of killed, um, she curses the people around her. So she curses Eliza, Teresa and the maid Helen. Um, this generational curse idea plays a large part in the plot of Ominous. Basically we're told by Noelle's grandmother that there's kind of a nut bar contingent of alums who believe in this curse somehow I don't understand how they came to know of it unless they discovered the book, but we're never told that they discovered the book, so I have no idea how they found out about it. But basically, they believe, uh, like in How to Hang a Witch, which I looked at like ages ago, that if all the members who were cursed, like all their descendants, are at the school at any one time, the curse will somehow become active and cause problems. And obviously, because Reed is descended from not just... Teresa Billings, like Noelle is, but also Eliza, whose line was thought to be gone. That's what they're putting down all of the stuff that's happened in previous books to. Reed's unnatural bad luck is to do with this curse. And that's pretty smart plotting because it kind of takes all of this unbelievable nonsense of like murders and kidnappings and blackmails and stalkings and it frames it in a way to say, yes, this is very unlikely. And it's because of a magical curse, which kind of makes it feel like the witch thing was planned all along, even though other aspects of the story don't feel that way at all. So it, it's kind of nicely meshed in that part with the, the, the lore of the series. So as the girls begin to go missing, Reed is left trying to convince the Billings girls, which includes the ones who weren't initiated into the literary society for some fucking reason like Missy Thurber and her tunnel like nostrils is invited even though she hates Reed and has made no secret of this but they all get invited over and Reed tries to explain the witch thing which is a pretty big ask um and there's some people who are kind of convinced or who at least think it would be cool and a lot of other people who are like our friends are missing presumed dead and you're wasting our time with this nonsense which again feels quite realistic 
Um, but then another bombshell is dropped in that Catherine, the dead possessed girl from Book of Spells, was an ancestor of none other than Ariana Osgood and Sabine, her half sister with a different surname. So again, that kind of feeds into the curse narrative that these girls were playing a role and that their weird and slightly unbalanced actions might have been due to the curse. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff hotting up. Reed's getting a bit frightened because she keeps having dreams about people who have tried to murder her. So uh, that's not good. Uh, and then we get to Reed's birthday bash at the end of the book in New York, which is basically a staging ground for them to try and catch whoever is after her because it's a big public event and they're trying to like get these people to come out of the woodwork and attack in the open where they can be captured. Prior to this, Reed manages to get Ivy to read the incantation with her and Ivy begins to develop powers of telekinesis, like she moves stuff with her mind twice, um, which, you know, we had future visions, we had telekinesis. I was like, if Noelle develops the power to stop time, I'm going to call bullshit. But then they do mention Charmed, so clearly they're aware of Charmed. There we go. They also then get everyone else in the former like Billings Girls group, not just the Literary Society, to be initiated. They do the ritual and everyone's candles go out and come back on again, except for two girls who are like the loudest non-believers and one girl whose candle kind of comes back on, but just a little bit, which is kind of explained as them not really believing. Um, but there you go. They also then try to do some spells, but those fail. And then at the party, Reed is approached by Kiki, who says that she has been experimenting and has been able to move some things with the telekinesis spell and produces some wind with the wind spell. Um, Kiki is then also kidnapped. And Noelle surmises that all the girls who are being kidnapped are the ones who the headmaster chose for Billings. They were not the ones who were vetted and brought in by Billings people. And so they are kind of like um, the sister who forced her way into the coven in the story that Helen the Maid told in Book of Spells. So basically, the crazy alumni people think that there is a curse upon the school, upon Billings, and the only way to stop it is to kill all the girls who were put into Billings without being vetted and chosen. And that includes Reed, because Ariana was the only one who wanted her in Billings and she wasn't vetted through the traditional process. Shit's bananas, but there we go. So Reed is abducted from the party and tied up with the other girls, including Missy, who... Reed is saving her life at the end of this book and she still seems like she hates her. So I can't wait for the, the finale novel. Uh, but it is revealed that the ringleader of this group is none other than Cheyenne's mum. That came out of fucking nowhere. I felt like I had been tackled by a linebacker while in a library minding my own business. So essentially she blames Reed and this curse that Reed has brought down upon all of them for the death of her daughter. Even though in a previous book she was quite nice to Reed and gave her like a picture of her and Cheyenne together and was like, oh, she always spoke really highly of you. I felt like that was weird at the time, but then nothing was ever said about it again. So either this has been plucked out of nowhere and the two signs of the mum aren't really meant to make sense, or that was just a clever ruse. I go back and forth on which one I want to believe, but she's there. She goes and stab everyone with a big ceremonial dagger to like end the curse. There you go. And they manage to stop her because Reed sends a telekinetic message to both Josh and Noel saying that they need help uh, and also I think Kiki like floats a knife at one point but doesn't actually manage to do anything with it so points for trying. They then get rescued by a bunch of people and taken to the hospital to be looked over and Cheyenne's mum is arrested but Reed taunts her at the point at which she is being arrested and she grabs one of the daggers which has just been left there to be like dealt with as evidence later tries to stab reed and noelle's dad jumps between them being instantly killed <laughs> so on the very last page of the book he's dead which is kind of a big cliffhanger we also find out just prior to that from chayan's mum's like ravings that reed's very existence may have been engineered by noelle's grandmother who is kind of obsessed with this old billings stuff and she 
knew about Reed's mum being a descendant of Eliza and employed her as an employee on, on this project that her son was working on and then kept pushing them together until they slept together, creating Reed, who is a descendant of both Eliza and Teresa. So... Again, shit's bananas. This this book just keeps throwing bombshells at you the whole time. And it's a once kind of believable, but also not as believable as the rest of the series. So it was kind of a wild ride. I had a good time, but at the same time, a lot of it kind of made no sense to me, um, which was a little bit unfortunate. I was kind of looking forward to them, like finding out that they were witches and doing witchy stuff. But most of the book is kind of given over to this disappearances thing to reed's dreams and not to them like coming together as a coven and, and and doing magic they don't really do a huge amount of magic actually um which is unfortunate and not really what i was looking for i feel like this would have been easier to pull off if book of spells had been more like magical realism with just girls like messing around with spells and stuff and then weird stuff happening and them not being sure if it was witchcraft or just like bad luck. And then that would have given this book a little bit more grounding in reality because they'd be reading the book and going, well, I don't know if I believe that we're witches, but someone out there does. And that's why we're in danger. Uh, and initiating like the whole group of Billings girls, even the ones that like don't like read very much, just kind of made zero sense to me. But there we have it, that's ominous. The last book in the series is Vengeance, and I've already started reading it, uh, but I will have finished it by the time I finish this review. But just at the start, it seems like a lot of the stuff that happened in Ominous isn't really being processed in Vengeance. For example, Noelle's dad's death. Uh, Reed has apparently been left a lot of money and she's using it to rebuild Billing's house, which Noelle doesn't really want her to do. That seems to be like the core of the plot so far is Reed trying to get Billing's house rebuilt with all this cash and she doesn't seem to really be grieving her like biological dad who she never really knew had like two conversations with. I kind of get that but also like she should really be grieving like the stuff that she'll never get to find out and also the witchcraft thing nearly completely absent in the third of the book that I've read so far. It's briefly mentioned that Kiki is still experimenting with witchcraft, but Reed has no interest in talking to her about it and it goes unmentioned, which is weird because in Book of Spells they had these like godlike superpowers where they could like float stuff with their minds and create wind and turn themselves invisible and, you know, literally raise the dead. And now Reed is preoccupied with zoning issues and alumni uh, organisation for the ribbon cutting ceremony of the new Billings and not thinking about the fact that she might have these incredible supernatural gifts, which she's just not using. And also she hasn't had any more dreams. So it seems like those dreams were confined entirely to ominous and are not happening again now. So I kind of get the feeling that the, the author tipped her toe in the witchy waters and then received instant backlash from fans of like, what the fuck is this? Which I kind of get. And then basically wrote all witchcraft out of vengeance. And for such a short book, I don't see how it's going to wrap up this entire like 14 book run plus two prequels. Um, but I am hoping to be surprised. I'm going to go away and finish it now. And we'll see how angry I am when I come back. Woohoo! The answer is very. I am very angry. So I had a, a temp gig yesterday where not much was going on because, spoiler alert, it was Christmas Eve. I'm recording this on Christmas Day because podcasting for no money is a full-time job. Um, but I finally finished the book in my lunch hour and I was very disappointed in Vengeance. For starters, they cut out all of the witch stuff except for that cursory mention that Kiki is still toying with the amazing godlike powers that they acquired in the previous book. The rest of them just not interested, apparently, despite their lives being threatened yet again. I'll come to more of that in my roundup. Basically, the construction of the new Billings building is set by setbacks. So you've got the fact that they can't build it because it's not green enough, apparently. And then a series of accidents that seem specifically engineered to claim Reed's life. So, you know, building supplies falling during a tour, the stage collapsing while she's trying to remove a banner on it that says Billings girls are murderers, etc, um, etc. Et 
Uh, and all the while, she's being warned by her cryptic mystery texter for this book, who is sending her messages saying, you know, don't go to this ball tonight. Something bad will happen. You need to get to the construction site right now because someone's put up a fucking banner. That sort of stuff. And the sort of climactic action begins when Reed does go to the ball and is nearly kidnapped by a masked attacker. Uh, but that is thwarted. And then she is told by the mystery texter to go and follow some directions. So she and the rest of the girls, like Noel, Kieran, Taylor, you know, the, the gang, they get in a car and they go following these directions. And they end up at Cheyenne's house, where they went, I think, in book four uh, for a Christmas party uh, just before Ariana revealed that she was a murderer. So it's kind of like coming full circle. We're back where we were you know sort of at the first end of the first like plot line in the first couple of books so they go there they follow the instructions they end up in the house and who should accost them but Cheyenne with a gun she's got Graham uh, the headmaster's son who hates Josh roped into this uh, and apparently they've kidnapped his brother Sawyer who is the one who was warning Reed this whole time and they've used his phone to lure her here to get their revenge so Cheyenne apparently faked her death in book five just so she could come back in book 14 and if you hear a distinctive squelching noise it's the very unfestive sound of something being pulled out of someone's ass because Cheyenne's body was like seen at like at the scene like girls w went into her room and were like oh no she's dead and then they had a whole funeral for her where her mum who was not crazy at that point attended and was very nice and part of me wants to give the author the benefit of the doubt and be like, okay, clearly this has been planned since book five. But the kind of rushed way that it is explained, she's like, oh, okay, my mom knew someone who was super into voodoo stuff and she gave me this potion that made me look like I was dead, but really I wasn't. And then we paid some paramedics to come and take me away and I've just been hiding here for literally a year. Uh, and it was actually Sabine's mum who helped us to do all this, even though Sabine was the one who tried to murder her and has gone to jail for the murder so you think that you know being accused of this murder she would have brought this up at trial to say like actually that girl that i meant to have murdered she's not dead but no that didn't come out then it just feels very contrived but apparently Cheyenne is here to do exactly what her mum was here to do in the previous book and it goes just about as well they managed to have reed captured for 0.5 of a second before she uses a stun gun that they didn't find in her waistband when they tied her up to electrocute the ropes until they burn off, then to shock Graham, get the gun away from him, and shoot Cheyenne in the leg, at which point everyone else busts in, having apparently managed to escape somehow, and Reed's like, it's okay guys, this time I saved myself, which is kind of a nice growth moment, but she also did kind of save herself in Paradise Lost, or the, like the book after that, because she was trapped on a desert island with nothing for like six days, like nearly a week, and managed to keep herself alive, and even managed to poison one of her kidnappers when he came back, and if she'd actually had the sense to go for the gun then, instead of running for the boat, which didn't have the keys in it, she would have saved herself in almost the exact same way as she does this time. So it, it feels like this is being counted as a growth moment when really it's similar to like a number of other moments. Anyway, so the bad guys are summarily arrested. Sawyer comes to explain that you know, he was the one sending the mystery decks in the sort of clumsy exposition scene. And then the last couple of chapters of the book are Reed seeing the seniors graduate, which includes Noel, and having lovey eyes with Josh because he is her one and only, in that she's been dating him for, I guess, most of the book series, despite, you know, getting off with a variety of other men. Uh, and then we get to like the final part of the book where Billings is going to be like rebuilt now. It's all fine and lovely and everyone's toasting to the future and having a great time. Um, so it kind of feels like this would have been a great wrap up book for the series had none of the witch stuff happened. I feel like if you're going to insert witches into like the 13th book in your book series, it is not a good idea to do that but if you're gonna do it don't overcorrect on the backlash and then just pretend that it didn't happen because that's just double the crime that's witches that suddenly appear and then disappear as opposed to just witches that suddenly appear and what annoys me now that i finished the series is how easily that witch stuff could have been blended in because 
a book series about, you know, privileged private school girls, murderous plots and stuff, you can incorporate witchcraft into that. In the first couple of books, like Private and then Invitation Only, they had these like rituals where they were like initiating read and there was candles and Ariana had this kind of weird mystical aura about her. She seemed to just kind of be all knowing, all seeing. She was constantly being described as being a little bit waifish, a little bit in and out of our world. So it would be very easy to introduce all the stuff about, you know, the Billings Literary Society at an earlier point. Say, for example, when uh, Reed is trying to wrest control of Billings away from Shayem and have her discover that actually there's this witch thing and want to take Billings in that direction, whereas Shayem wants to keep it as being shallow champagne parties, and eclairs and dudes. And then have from that point onwards, Reed kind of discover more of the history and get into this concept that people think that she's brought this curse down on Billings and then it would feel like it was coming less out of left field and then wouldn't crucially disappear in the last and possibly shortest book of the series because for a book that has quite a lot of threads to wrap up it, it does feel like it's it's not very long and consequently the whole like kidnap plot the, the whole sabotaging of the new Billings building feels a little bit anticlimactic when it's finally revealed to be someone you have thought was dead the last eight books who was to all intents and purposes dead because i feel like they were meant to be dead right up until the point the author needed someone to be the bad guy in this book and i feel like if you're going to do something like that it needs to be maybe missy because although missy is kind of an antagonist throughout the entire book series it's not until the last couple of pages that she's arrested as an accessory to the crimes of um Cheyenne and also Paige, uh, Paige is involved, as is her twin Daniel, whose uh, their mum was arrested in like the Paradise Lost arc. And they were involved, they were all arrested. But Missy has been low-key gunning for Reed since she turned up at the school and is a Billings legacy. And I feel like they could have really made Missy the primary bad guy in this book if they just kind of framed it as her coming out of that near-death experience in Ominous. And suddenly being Reed's biggest fan and being like, you know what, you saved my life. And then suddenly she turns on her again. I feel like that would have been more surprising than Shane just randomly coming back to life and then having to offer this convoluted explanation about how she's actually been fine this whole year, just hiding. And somehow her parents, who, I mean, fair enough, you've said her mum is like obsessed with this conspiracy stuff, but she still has a dad who might wonder why she's not at school for a year. Uh, and Shane was never shown to be interested in any of this witchy stuff she was only obsessed with controlling billings so it, it just felt a little bit rushed a little bit slapdash a little bit under thought but i am quite glad to have read the series i did have some good times with it i did enjoy it the thing that makes me annoyed about it is that there is so much potential here because i enjoyed this like six out of ten most of the way through and it had some real high points as well but i think ha having seen the witchy stuff in it and having the benefit of hindsight because obviously having read even though i've read these in order the author was writing them like one after the other like what am i doing now i feel like there are ways that this could have been slotted in and made a little bit more neat a little bit more continuous as opposed to being as weird as it as it came off so i'm not mad about the series but uh, I'm, I can't really recommend it that much either. There has been like stuff on the Wikipedia page about them repeatedly trying to turn this into a TV series or a movie. And I hope that in like the current world where we've got all this Sabrina the Teenage Witch coming back, we've got the Craft remake. There's a lot of buzz around witches at the moment and it would be exciting to see this done as a series. But where they incorporate witches from the beginning, I think that could work really well. Um, but... If I was to give you some advice about this series, it would be read the Book of Spells prequel if you want to read about witch stuff and then read the rest of the series if you are interested in like the private school drama and then Ominous, which is like the one book where they do witchcraft stuff, even if that is slightly disappointing. So that's really my only recommendation for the series. I hope you enjoyed this slightly odd a series of reviews on my uh, on my podcast because a lot of this stuff wasn't witch related but it was still kind of fun to talk about and as always you can recommend me some stuff in the comments section on youtube or over on twitter if you'd like to get in touch on twitter and in the meantime i'm gonna go and enjoy the rest of my christmas day and whenever you guys hear this it'll probably be like march but merry christmas guys